Why is the banana gene so different than every other gene that we've identified in ball pythons? And why is it so difficult to understand? It's not really that difficult to understand. We are going to go back to the closet door board today, though, and talk about it as simply and as completely as I know how to do. Uh, I'm going to use visuals again, you guys. Welcome to The Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is the Detective Inspector. He is, as you might guess, a banana, as well as Inchy, Orange Dream. He might be, he, he's actually probably super Inchy, and he could be super Orange Dream as well, but we have to prove that out. He's also possibly Fire and maybe Pastel, but I think he's more likely to prove out Fire than, than Pastel. So he's got some, some stuff that we can't really tell what's in him because of the banana. It's such a visually dominant gene that it's kind of masking what other things he might have. So we just have to breed him to prove it out. And in breeding him with three of my females this year, what I'm hoping to have, this, is his, this will be his first year breeding. So what I'm hoping to have is three clutches of eggs, hopefully. And what's probably gonna happen there is that every male that he produces will contain the banana gene, will be a banana male. Every female that he produces will not be a banana. So uh, the, we have about a 95% chance of that being the case. So we'll talk about why that is. We're gonna go to the board. As always, by the way, behind the camera is my brother, Kent. Kent, you wanna say hi? I don't like the name banana for a snake because it makes people think, oh, it's just named after a fruit. It can't hurt you. It's a terrible name. You know what's a good name? It's Coral Glow. You told me one time that Coral Glow and banana are the same snake, just different name. Well, you know what? A coral snake is highly venomous. So a Coral Glow is a coral snake, but glowing with venom. Stay away. That's a good name for a snake. Banana. You know what? You could die from a banana too. You could choke on it. It could be not ripe. All sorts of ways. I mean, thanks as always, Kent, for your input. Really, really valuable. All right, I'm going to put the detective inspector back. He's cruising around. He's, he's going to be a beard snake for a minute. I'm going to put him back in his enclosure and then we are going to get, oh, now he's, now he's just going to, now he's definitely on my mic. Sometimes uh, snakes will do this. They'll wrap around and they'll start squeezing and they're not trying to kill you. But what they're doing is they get stuck on your neck and, you know, they touch your skin and they get stuck on your neck and they, it's like a Chinese finger trap and they just squeeze harder and harder. I talked about it in another video, but this is a great example of it. They're not trying to give you a hug and they're not trying to kill you or anything. They're just trying to move. And if they can't move, they'll try harder by doing the same thing. Uh, so anyway, little behavior bit in this, in this video. Uh, all right, I'm gonna put him back and then we're gonna get back to a genetics video. We'll do more behavior stuff later. Okay, before we get into this fancy board situation, you should know that there's a ton of videos out there about the banana gene. However, there's a lot of misinformation out there because up until about three years ago, we didn't know really what was going on with, with banana. And so any video that talks about the theories of how banana works that's three years old or older is just guessing. Any video that you see that's, you know, more current than that has good information usually. A lot of times uh, it doesn't have the complete information. So when I was learning about the banana gene, I had to watch different videos. First of all, watch different videos several times to understand this. And also put several different videos together to sort of get the complete picture. So what I'm gonna to try to do here with this is explain to you how this works, and it's actually very simple. So this isn't a hard concept to understand, but what a lot of people try to do is they try to just memorize, oh, okay, well, if it's a male maker and it came from the mom and then the, and then the dad, then that's gonna make the, you know, memorizing stuff is gonna be really difficult. Uh, to do because there's a lot of different sort of variables, but understanding how it works makes it very simple. Let me start out at the very beginning for people who don't understand even what banana does or why this is a different gene. This is a sex-linked gene. And what that means is that you can have male maker or female maker banana ball pythons. So mine, for example, uh, the inspector, 
is a male maker banana ball python. That means that he will, all of the males that he produces will be banana. Uh, there's about a 5% chance that they won't, but 95% chance every single male will be banana and every single banana will be male. Uh, if he was a female maker, it would be the reverse of that. So uh, that's, a, that's an interesting thing about banana and we're gonna explain how that works. Um, but the thing to know, the, the other thing to understand that a lot of people don't, I think, is that when we talk about male maker and female maker bananas, we're only talking about the dad. The mom will, will make 50-50. If the, if the mother is a banana, she'll make 50% females and 50% males. Because, and, and we're gonna sort of back up and get out of banana for a minute and just talk about how, uh, how sex is determined, but the mother doesn't have anything to do with determining sex. So let's just really quickly go over this. These blue lines are the sex chromosomes. Okay, so we're just calling these the sex chromosomes. And uh, there's a bunch of different chromosomes that make up a, a snake, let's say, uh, just to keep it easy. And most of the genes that we've identified are located on other chromosomes. They're not even on these uh, sex chromosomes, but banana is, okay? So let's talk about this. A female, this happens in people as well. This is the, exactly the same way as, as people work. A female has an X and an X chromosome that they can throw either one of these, but they're both X. The male, a male has an X and a Y and he could throw either, either one of these. And this is, if you saw my other genetics video, uh, this is very similar to how the, the you know, morph genes work, you know, in throwing, in throwing one of these, but it's random. So if we know that, that mom is always gonna throw one of these X's, she can't throw anything else because she only has two X's to throw, She's gonna do that. And then the dad will either, and it's a 50-50 shot, he'll either throw a Y, which would make this baby a boy. By the way, do you like my artwork? Kent, do you like my artwork? Nope. Thank you for the constructive criticism. If dad throws an X, then the baby is a girl. So this is why Mom has nothing to do with, with determining the genes. It's, it's up to the father to, I mean, determining the, the sex is what I meant to say. It's up to the father to do that. So let's put these back. Now here's the, here, here's the simple explanation for banana. Uh, and that is that the banana gene, let's say that the dad, let's see, uh, yeah. The banana gene sits on the X and Y chromosomes. And that's why they're sex linked. Here's what happens. Mom throws an X, just like she did before. It's a plain old X. Dad throws a Y. There's a banana gene, that little yellow spot is our banana gene, if you hadn't already guessed that. The banana gene is attached to the Y chromosome. That's just where it is. So when he throws his Y, he's also going to throw a banana. 95% of the time. I almost said every time, but think of it as every time. There is what's called a crossover event where, where this, this banana gene could jump to the X, but it only happens about 5% of the time. So let's just say the rule is that it stays on this Y gene. So every Y gene that he throws in the clutch is going to have banana attached to it. And every X gene that he throws will not have banana. So this is exactly how, how the inspector is, is wired. Uh, he will throw, every boy that he has will have a banana gene attached and that's why those boys will be bananas, okay? So let's say that mom, let's see, let's put, let's make dad the non-banana situation. And let's say that mom now is banana. Now watch this. So that, Here's, here's why the females are not male maker, female maker. Uh, um, they're they're going to throw 50% of whatever. Because here's what happens. If mom throws this X, then we just have no banana at all. Dad could throw the Y and we got a normal boy. Or dad could throw the X and we've got a normal girl. Right? Mom could throw the banana X and if she does, 
dad could throw the Y and we've got a banana boy or dad could throw the X and we've got a banana girl. Now watch this. If, let's say it's a banana boy right here, that makes this baby a female maker because every X gene, let's, let's, uh, ch let's change this back to the dad. So since we were talking about that anyway, because that baby's not old enough to have children yet. So let's say that the dad is, has banana on his X. So that makes him a female maker because now when he throws his X gene, the mom who has two X's, uh, she, she can only throw one of those. That's going to be a female, right? If he throws his Y, then that's not where the banana is located. So do you understand that? That's, that's, this is why, depending on which chromosome this, this banana gene is located, whether it's on the X for a female maker or the Y for a male maker in the father, that's how that is determined. Now, somebody uh, just as I was just as I was figuring out sort of how I was going to explain this about an hour ago, I went onto Facebook and somebody asked a question. They said, "What if the mother and father are both bananas? What genders are they going to are they going to throw a banana to?" And I quickly responded to it and just said, uh, "You'll get males and females." And then I and then I left. And then I realized that wasn't a very good explanation because it's true, you will get both males and females, but there's a better explanation for it. And so I'll say that here and we'll, t we'll figure this out. Hey everybody, Future Bob here. I'm just editing the current video that you're watching for Past Bob. If you're getting value out of this video, do me a favor and just take one second to click the like button. That really helps YouTube's algorithm to push this video out to more people. And this is a genetics video, so let's be honest, it's gonna need all the help it can get. If this were a video on snake farts, we wouldn't need to have this conversation. So we got mom and dad are bananas. There's also super banana, which could happen. Uh, banana is an incomplete dominant gene. We, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but whatever. There, you could have super bananas too, but right now we're just saying that, that mom is a single gene banana and dad is a single gene banana. Let's make him, let's make him a male maker just for this since we were talking about that before. Okay, so here we go. Here's the more complete explanation. It's that every boy is gonna be either a banana or a super banana, okay? Always, 100% of the boys will be bananas, barring a crossover event. So we're gonna put the dad's girl gene here, the X, because he's the one that determines the gender. So the, the gender has been determined, it's gonna be a girl. 50% of the girls will be bananas in this case, okay? Because the father is the one who determines the gene. So there's no banana in his gene and there is banana in half of the mom's genes. So 50% of the girls will be bananas, 50% will be normal, 100% of the boys will be bananas and out of those banana boys, 50% will be super banana. So that's the more complete explanation of the question that was on Facebook uh, about an hour ago. Let's take a look at super banana. Mom's a super banana, dad's a female maker. Mom gives one of these genes, it doesn't matter which one, she's always gonna give a banana gene. Dad gives a Y, you got a banana. Dad gives an X, you've got a super banana. So, and that's gonna happen the exact same way with the other one. So you're only going to get bananas and super bananas in that case. And the only super bananas are going to be female. And the only single gene bananas are going to be male. You can almost sex your ball pythons this way uh, if you're not good at popping or probing. However, there is that crossover event. And basically what that means, a crossover event, and I don't understand it well enough to uh, probably explain it properly, but, but think about it this way. As all this stuff is happening, cells are dividing or doing whatever they do. I'm not a geneticist, you guys. 
this little yellow square comes off and crosses over and lands on the Y. And then all of a sudden, just in this sperm right here, this one, uh, the, the, it, becomes, it becomes this. And now that one baby is a, is a male maker, ends up being a male banana. So that I've heard, I've heard uh, 5% and I've heard 6% of the time. Some, some breeders are saying that their experience is like 10% or something like that. But uh, when I've heard it from actual genetics experts, they say 5 or 6%. But either way, it's highly unlikely that that'll happen. So you can almost figure, I mean, I would sex them anyway, because for me, I, I would love to have the inspector throw a, um, a, a male that's not a banana, and I'd love to see a female that is a banana. I would hold those back in a heartbeat. Did I explain this completely enough? I forgot where I where we were at here on this. We were talking about. I think I think I explained that well enough, right? You got bam. Oh yeah, we yeah we went we went through that. We went through that. Okay. Is there any variable that I didn't cover on this? May all your snakes be this cute. I drew, I freehand drew that, you guys. I'm not an artist. Come on, and I wrote those letters legibly. I'm pretty proud of myself there. All right, you guys, I hope that was helpful for those of you who stuck with it. I know that genetics videos are not the most popular ones, and I definitely didn't do this one to get a ton of hits. Uh, I did it to help people who are genuinely interested in trying to sort this out, and I hope that that helped. Um, Kent, uh, would you like to do a sign off for us? I wasn't listening, but I just read on Google that bananas, the fruit, kill the same amount of people per year as ball pythons. So I don't know if people aren't peeling them correctly or what, but be careful out there, you guys, with, with your produce. Thanks, Kent. Uh, that was very professional of you. Thanks for watching. And, you know, if you enjoyed the video, take two seconds and hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to subscribe. Notification bell. Really appreciate that. These, uh, we're still in the early stages of this channel, and I've been getting a lot of really positive feedback, which I super appreciate. It's nice when, when you don't have a million subscribers yet, uh, and there's not a lot going on in the channel. It's really nice to hear from people in the comments section, in the DMs, and things like that, uh, that they're enjoying the channel. So thank you so much for the support. I love the early supporters. It's really, uh, really nice. See you next time. Hey folks, Future Bob, I had a quick idea. By the way, I'm here with young Miss Lydia Dietz. She has nothing to do with the idea, but uh, I thought I'd show her off since she's in my hands right now. I just finished editing the video and I was just about to post it, but I had an idea as sort of an Easter egg for those who watch to the very end and for actually the first person who watches till the very end. Because what I'd like to do for that one person is gift you the original artwork of the baby snake from this video. Now, when I say original artwork, I mean that I freehand drew it, but I got the design off of the internet because I don't know how to draw. Uh, so anyway, here's how this will work. Uh, as long as there's no other comment asking for this, put a comment down below of how compelling the video was that you watched till the very end, and then just put, I want the snake art and then DM me your address. You can email me at uh, greenroompythons at gmail.com or you can go to my Instagram, uh, green, at green underscore room underscore pythons and DM me that way. Just send me your address and I'll send you that along with uh, this copy of this sticker and I'll send you this, you know, a little, little sticker pack of Green Room Python stuff. All right, so uh, thanks for watching all the way through to this, whoever did that. Thank you.